Hello, souls and demons, and welcome back to the portal. Today we have another installment of Glitch in the Matrix Stories. Stories about reality, breaking for you mortals. So sit back, grip your seats, change that one to a zero, and enjoy. Neither of us know how this happened. So, 12 years ago, we moved to where we are now. While packing, I put all important papers at the time in a locking file cabinet. This filing cabinet ended up in our shed where it has sat for the past 12 years, untouched. It's actually in the back, underneath years worth of other things that have been put in storage as well. My oldest son's social security card was among these important papers. And he knew he would get it at 18 years old. Up until then, I've had his social security number memorized since it was issued to him. Two years ago, he turned 18 and off to college he went. Before he left, we had a conversation that I would have to spend an entire day getting to that filing cabinet to retrieve his card for him. No problem, he memorized his social security number too. Life happened and I never got around to cleaning out the shed and getting the card. Right before lockdown, I managed to convince him to come home. He's been here ever since. Not long ago, we were chatting and he was cleaning out his wallet. Lo and behold, he pulls out his social security card. I said to him, oh, did you get tired of waiting and go online and get a new one? He looked at me really confused and said, no, I've had this for a long time now. I said, no, don't you remember that I was supposed to get it from the shed? He said yes, and I asked him when I gave it to him. He couldn't remember the actual act of me giving him his card. Neither of us remember this. I know for a fact that I never dug it out from that filing cabinet. And he knows for a fact that he never got a new one. We are both completely perplexed. I know this isn't extremely exciting, but it's bothering me so much. Stuff has been unexplainably appearing in my bedroom. There's these most recent examples of stuff that has just been randomly appearing in my bedroom. The first is a drawing on a photo I have taped to my wall. It is taped on all four corners. It's just a pretty normal sized printed picture. And like last week I noticed there was orange highlighter on each piece of tape. Which definitely sounds like something I would do but I just didn't and obviously no one else did that. Next example, which happened just today, is actually crazy. I wanted to post about it, so that's why I downloaded Reddit right now. About four years ago, I had this white t-shirt I got at some fair. It was too big, so I cut strips on the end of the shirts to tie it. Because that was a cute style four years ago. Anyway, I had a bunch of little white scraps of that shirt. They were rolled up, and I managed to kind of get them everywhere before I threw them out. After that, I was finding them around for a few months. But now, four years later, there's none left. I vacuumed them all. But just now, I found one on top of the light of my ceiling fan. Not on a blade of the fan, but just on top of the lamp. But no way that piece of fabric has been there for four years. I've looked at the fan forever. I would have seen it before. This piece of fabric is very obvious to see from anywhere in the room. Looking at it now... It has no dust on it at all. Unlike the surface, it's on the lamp. Also, I recently changed the light bulb in that lamp and I hadn't seen the fabric when I was up there. These two circumstances are weird because they are things that would make sense but just don't. Like drawing on the tape. I've done stuff like that before, but I didn't do it there. And I haven't even done it since I taped the photo to the wall. And in the fabric. I was finding those things around everywhere four years ago. I think I'm kind of understanding what the glitch is, but not really. Because it just doesn't actually make any sense. An old man on the side of the road. This glitch happened to me quite a while ago, I think almost about a year ago. I was driving to my friend's house at around sunset and on the side of the road I saw an older man with quite a hunch in his back. He had a bucket hat and one of those light strip vests on the side. You know, the ones that let people see you while biking, etc. He was moving extremely slow. I can't remember, but I think he was carrying a cane as well. 
Well, I see him, take note of him, and then turn the corner to go down the street to where my friend lives. I'm going like 25 miles per hour at this point. Suddenly, as I make it towards my friend's house, I see the exact old man, slowly turning the corner of the street next to my friend's and then gone. Literally just not there. I instantly went cold as hell and almost started shaking because I was so sure I had seen something paranormal. There was literally no way this old man made it all the way down to the end of this long street without literally running like hell. He would have to have been going two times faster than my car to make it to the point where he was turning around the corner. And then when I drove by the street, he turned down. He just wasn't there. Freaked me out so bad. Anyways, I got to my friend's house and almost cried. It is kind of known that his little corner of the street where his house sits is haunted by a little boy. So maybe this area in general is just haunted? I really don't know, but all I know is when you see something paranormal slash glitchy, your body just reacts in a way that's completely new. I've never felt so cold, all the way up to my bones. My Partner's Engagement Ring My partner and I are long distance. We recently got engaged and I shipped them the engagement ring. We're simple people and so it's just a black snake ring. I know, nothing fancy. But I don't think the shape of the ring has to do with this, unless it does. An important note is that they have DID. If you don't know what it is, please look it up. One altar hates the ring. This altar is not my partner. They are just an altar in my partner's DID system. And when they were on a walk... This altar threw it off a bridge and down into some train tracks, I think. The setting wasn't super specific, but I know that if my partner were to jump off the bridge to go to retrieve the ring, they wouldn't physically be able to get back to the bridge. So getting this ring after it was thrown was physically impossible. My partner finally fronts and they freak out about the ring. They don't know where it is and they're having a panic attack about it. The room is torn apart top to bottom put back together again and they're still in hysterics about not knowing where it went. The altar that threw it off the bridge fronted again and told me over text what had happened. Since it was over text the next time my partner fronted, they were able to reread the conversation and then proceed to cry because it's unretrievable. The ring was gone for about a week and I have been talking nearly constantly with my partner and their altars so I know where they leave to when they do and I know when they sleep. We're FaceTiming each other almost every second of the day due to long distance, so it's safe to say that they haven't been near the bridge whatsoever. And even if they were, again, they can't get to the ring. We're on call and they suddenly tell me the ring is right on their dresser. It's the exact same black snake engagement ring, just sitting there and at this point, we have no idea what to do except just accept it. While the ring was gone for around a week, they were under a lot of stress. Now that the ring is found, the stress has lessened. But it was just sitting there on the dresser, right in plain sight. I've even seen their dresser and it was most obviously not there. So where? Possibly citing an agent. In April 2017, my friends, male 34, male 27, and I, female 36, were walking to a bus stop and we were running late, so walking pretty fast uphill. We noticed a guy around 10 years older than us dressed in teen fashion sportswear. He was the male equivalent of mutton dressed as lamb, so we all noticed him. As his cap and trainers were pretty flashy. He passed us on the left going down the hill, which is pretty steep, and we got to the top of the hill and see the exact same guy walking towards us. We all stop dead in our tracks and stare. I wonder if the guy has a twin. If he does, why would they both dress so expensively cringe, and why didn't any three of us recognize the guy anyway? We live in a council estate where literally everyone knows everyone. It's like a small town. My mind is racing, and I turn to look down the hill to see if the guy we passed is there. But he's not, which is even more worrying. 
as there is nowhere he really could have gone. Even if he ran down the hill, he should have only just got to the bottom, which is a crossing on a main busy road. There's absolutely no way he could have doubled back on us either, as we were practically running uphill to catch the bus, and we're nearly at the ascent as he passed us going down the hill. The guy then crosses the road and starts walking down the hill again on the top left, just as he did about 30 seconds before. We just look at each other and sprint to the bus stop. We don't have to talk, because all three of us know this is seriously weird and just want to get away. The bus arrives just as we get to the stop, and we go down the hill passing the guy that just passed us. And as we get to the crossing, I look for the first guy we saw, but he's not there. Even though he should be, and we all see how weird it is. All three of us clearly remember it to this day, and have put it down to a glitch in the Matrix. As there's nothing else it could have been. Disappearing into thin air. So it was basically around 5 in the morning and I was in my room. I woke up super early that day but I was well rested and had been up for a couple of hours. I have this vape basically and it's a pretty decent size, a very bold orange color. Hard to miss. Keep in mind I hadn't left my room at any point since I would woken up. I'm hitting the vape on my bed while watching a movie and I throw it down beside me on the bed. Couple minutes later, I go to hit it again and it's not there. At first, I didn't think anything of it and just figured it had gotten lost in my bed and started looking for it. But after some time, I had come to the realization that it had completely disappeared. I searched every corner of my room, in every possible place, and it was nowhere to be found. Even took off and shook down my blankets and sheets and pillowcases and nowhere. Just gone. And I know what you're thinking. There's got to be some plausible explanation for this or whatever, but let me just clarify this. One, I hadn't left my bedroom once. Two, it's a heavy object, so if it fell, I definitely would have heard it. Three, regardless of whether it may have fallen, I looked everywhere. Everywhere. Four, I had just hit it, so there's no way it could have ended up anywhere else in my room to begin with. Five, I don't drink or smoke weed, so no, I wasn't intoxicated and simply forgotten where I put it. This is not the first time this has happened. In fact, it's happened multiple times. The exact situation and to this day, I've never found any single thing I've lost. Every time it's happened, it happened in my room and they've been vapes. Don't know if that's a coincidence. I have renovated my room multiple times and after each circumstance, they never even show up then. It's so bizarre. I'm not a person that's prone to losing things, and I have a very organized room, given I always like my things in a certain place. If this was the first time this has happened, I simply would rationalize it as a misplaced object, but this has happened a dozen times and every situation has been identical to each other. Always taking place in my room, and every single time, it's always been my vape. Removed from space. I was 14 or 15, 19 now, when my parents moved into their current house in a moderately rural suburb. There were houses to the left, right, and across from us, but behind us there was a fence separating us from a completely different suburb. Well, one day I was walking around the neighborhood and discovered that, at the far end of the road I lived on, the picket fence ended and gave away into the barbed wire fence and then dense woods where development was going on to the north. There was a hole in the barbed wire that was big enough for me to fit through. I wasn't much of a rule breaker, so I would usually be opposed to crawling under a barbed wire fence, but something caught my attention. On the other side of that opening, there was a pathway mowed into otherwise waist-high weeds. Figuring it was part of my neighborhood and therefore my prerogative to explore, I went through. There was nothing super weird except this overwhelming feeling of loneliness. It sounds really cliche and I can probably chalk it up to nerves. But I felt like I was separated from the rest of the world. Or at least much farther from my house than I was a second before. There were, sure enough, paths mowed into very tall grass. And very recently mowed. 
because it was neatly done. The paths didn't lead anywhere, they seemed to zigzag across this field in wide arcs and open up in small sections where I could see the tree line. It was probably ten acres across, a very large field. I followed the path going left from the barbed wire fence entrance, which would have taken me to my house and the neighboring suburb behind my back fence. But the field continued to stretch on. I could see houses on the other side of the tree line, but I couldn't recognize any of them as my own. To top it off, I was certain that the place I was standing must have been part of that other suburb, which I could normally see from my backyard. I went back home and asked my parents, who said they hadn't seen a field like that when looking around the neighborhood. I went on Google Earth and it showed a very small patch of undeveloped woodland where that field was. I even went so far as to check my country's registry to see who owned that land, but it said that someone from across the U.S. owned it. I went back several times between ages 14 and 17. I could never convince my parents to come with me. I would bring a camping chair and my textbooks and do my homework out there in high school. One day I went and there were empty plastic soda bottles in one of the wide open spaces which was reassuring because it means someone other than me was there. I was reminded of the story because I came back from my first year of college to find the land north of my neighborhood being developed into another suburb. I looked as I went by the fence. This time, it appeared that the section of barbed wire had been repaired, and it looked just like undeveloped woodland beyond, the same as it was on Google Earth. My biggest issue with this situation is how large the space was. I'm a pretty avid backpacker and have experience orienting myself outdoors, so it was really unnerving when I was standing in a field where I knew another suburb and home should be standing. My other issue was with the paths cut into it. In my walks around them, I never saw a path that cut into a person's yard or property, nor was there a gate for a mower to enter. It was fenced on all sides. It wasn't a pattern or anything crazy like a crop circle. It was just a nonsensical looping path through an otherwise overgrown field. Can you guys offer any logical explanations other than you were disoriented? Both neighbors walking same dog in two places at once. This legit made me feel crazy. Okay, so the back of my house backs up to a main road and we don't have a lot of fences in our neighborhood, so you can clearly see the back of me plus my neighbor's house when you're driving past. So one morning, within the last few weeks or so, I was pulling out of my driveway at the front of my house, and I very distinctly saw my male neighbor leaving the front of his house with a dog, on leash and tow. He seemed to be heading in the same direction I was going. I remember because there are lots of kids around this hood and I'm always hyper vigilant to make sure no one's running around. After I left the cul-de-sac, I made a left turn onto the main road, which took me directly past the back of our houses. I turned to gape in confusion and I saw the female neighbor walking the same exact dog, but around the back of the houses instead. I even slowed down to do a double take. I started thinking about these glitch stories and thought I would share. Any thoughts on this glitch? Now don't you dare give me that, oh maybe they have two dogs and they were both walking them separately or maybe it was someone else with the same kind of dog. Blah 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 nonsense. We know our neighbors here and it was definitely them plus that dog is distinct as hell. Big giant fluffy white dog and three legs. There is not more than one of those around. Also, they didn't have time to hand off the dog to one another and switch directions. They were both on foot and my car got to the road quickly. Besides, who in the heck would do that unless they were deliberately trying to make me insane? Note to self. I have a new plan to make other people feel insane.